Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody, and um, I, I've got a fair amount I got to talk about, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this part out of the way. Right, we're gonna go ahead and get this part out of the way real quick. Um, like I do on a lot of these videos, I'm gonna have some music going in the background. Um, this time around, it's gonna be Tone Stucco, World of Elevator. So it's just, just some uh, laid back synth music. Um, it's got a lot of bass in it, which is one of my favorite instruments. So. I figured I'd go ahead and give that one a go. And then, it's also a fairly long album, too. It's about 45 minutes. I have a feeling that I'm probably going to, this video is probably going to go, it's probably going to go about that long, if not longer. So, let's go ahead and fire up. And then, I guess maybe as a precautionary measure, I'm going to go ahead and set it to loop. Okay. But, anyway, um, i got to sketch a little bit of background for, for those that don't follow Dungeons & Dragons. Um, as of recently, uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, decided to take what was one of the greatest things about Dungeons & Dragons and totally fucked it up. They, it's called the Open Game License. In fact, let me back up a bit. I did do a, I did do a video, I did do a video about this, um. I, if I remember to, I'll post a link to that video in the description. But um, getting back on subject, though, uh, what they've, what Wizards of the Coast, um, what they've decided to do is initially, or hell, I think they might still be going through with it. But they've decided that they wanted, um, they wanted 25% of the profits from from all companies that make at least 750 grand a year. From the content they make, uh, Critical Role, um, Critical Role was one was probably the biggest, the biggest D and D live stream. Um, Dimension Twenty was another. Um, the company that makes an idle game called Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, I think they're going to be another one that's going to be hit by this. They now have to fork over twenty five percent of the twenty five percent of their income over to Wizards. So. And then re in re recently, it also came out that uh, they're they're also going to charge people like I think it's like thirty bucks a month to yeah it's like a thirty bucks a month uh, subscription fee I think it's to D and D Beyond um, as a and a, a, if that's what I'm thinking of it's so as a precautionary measure I went ahead and unsubbed to D and D Beyond because I think. It was like 50, 60 bucks a year. So, but now if they're going to go to the $30 a month uh, subscription model, yeah, I'm bailing the hell out of that. So, I figured I better do that now before they started, started voicing the uh, monthly subscription on everybody. So, cancel subscription on that. Um, but yeah, there was a, there was a whole bunch. There was a whole bunch of um, other bad stuff that Wizards was planning on doing. It was it was in this tweet. I can't remember what the rest of them were, but the one that caught me was uh, the thirty dollar a month subscription. So once again, I unsubbed. Anyway, try to once again getting back on getting back on subject. Wizards is now wanting a cut of uh, of what everyone's everybody's making. Like I said, they. I guess uh, there was a there was a. There's a tweet or article or something that a Wizards was complaining about how how under monetized they are. So, and I guess they're looking at all these uh things like Critical Role that you know they're they're making all you know they're making all this money, and now they're figuring you know what what can they do to get their hands on that money. So, basically what basically what they're doing is they're they're going to Africa to drill for oil now. So, there's a there's all this untapped vast wilderness that is just screaming drill me so now what what big oil i mean wizards of the coast is going to do is they're not going to go you know they're going to go tap this virgin territory and they're going to start building oil wells and basically they're going to pave paradise and put up a parking lot there we go so so anyway um after you know so after finding out about this um one of the videos that came up on my YouTube recommendations was uh, Pathfinder, uh, Pathfinder 2E, um, and then I just just started wa water, 
started watching a few videos of that about Pathfinder, how it's different from D&D. Um, I think another another channel I checked out, Dungeon Dudes. I it's been a it's been a few days since I actually watched that video, but I think I'll what are the um what are the other TTRPGs that they're mentioning with Pathfinder. Um, but again, I I had heard the name for years, but I always thought it was just basically a WoW ripoff or a WoW clone. Or excuse me, I always thought it was a a D and D clone. You know, so you know, might have been might have been one of those companies that came out like right around the 2000s when WoW was super popular. You know, the next we are the next WoW killer. We do things that WoW won't. You know, that kind of thing. And we're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna shut Blizzard down. We're gonna run them out of business. But it never ended up happening. The the WoW clones ended up tanking, and everybody just goes back to WoW. But no, um, Pathfinder. Uh, I guess I found out was actually go still going pretty strong. Was uh, I guess a pretty close competitor to D and D. But again, I I didn't give didn't give Pathfinder any thought because once again I thought it was just gonna be another D and D clone. Again, see WoW. So what I thought I'd go ahead and do is um is just go ahead and check out um I just Google Pathfinder 2E uh just I got a couple a uh, couple windows open up I just want to see all they work you know I do also need to say too that uh yesterday I opened up their uh, character creator you know you can create your own character with it and stuff I got a, a small way into that until I figured you know. Maybe I should just do a full-blown video about this. I'm gonna take a drink of some water real quick. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and I'm gonna try not to spend too much time in this section here, because it's mostly just text. Whoa! All right, we got a wall of text, but uh, to be fair though, I want to say um, D and D Beyond website has this as well. They got you know they got a fair amount of walls of text, but at least they're bolding, at least they're highlighting, highlighting their words or stuff and stuff. It's probably also one of the reasons why Frank Zappa is one of my favorite authors, because stuff like this is all over the place on his. He's got bold text. He's got underlines. He's got ital. He's got italic text. I mean, he's got that all over the place. So it just it keeps the uh, it keeps this text from being dry. I try to do that in my uh, Final Fantasy XIV blog posts as well. Try to use bold, italic stuff like that. So just to help break up the monotony. Anyway, most of the dice we're going to be doing be twenty sided dice. Um. Which, now, they're starting to make it sound like uh, they're only using D20. If that's the case, that's pretty damn impressive. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah. I hope you can homebrew this out. I mean, as one who's played a fair amount of games that have a lot of RNG, um... Gems of War comes to mind. Yeah, it. Yeah, if if you're able to homebrew this out, I'd jump at that chance. And I mean, hell, um, I know in Dungeons and Dragons, um, if you roll a natural one or a natural twenty, those are the critical uh, critical fails and the critical hits. Critical successes. I guess on here. Uh, yeah. If you beat the DC by 10 or more or failed by 10 or more, go. Go. I can already kind of see a problem with this. Now, unless 
unless they have a unless they have a way out of this uh, I know uh, in third edition D and D they um I think they had a mechanic called taking ten like if it was a task that wasn't too difficult you could just simply take a roll of ten okay so yeah you do have to roll more than a d20 in all cases they're not bringing kids Um, yeah, but I could already, uh, I could already see a big, uh, I could already see a big, uh, downside to this. I don't care much about the, I don't care much about the critical successes. I mean, with me, at least in my mind, I'm a black, when it comes to dice rolling, it's black and white. Either you pass or fail, you succeed or fail. I don't like this critically crap. And again, I don't care about, I don't care about critically succeeding. Yeah, make an all attack. Yeah, let me let me move on. Your modifier for efficiency bonus, ability bonus. Okay, a lot of MMOs and RPG video games have it too. Although made include other bonuses. Well, so far I'm kind of liking this website. I'm having an easy time highlighting everything, and plus. So it looks like according to my OBS though, it from my end it's coming out as blue, but apparently, apparently uh, the way it's looking on OBS here, it's coming out as gray. So I think there was a way to. So I'll go ahead and put it back to dark theme. So let me um let me re-highlight it and nope, still comes up as gray. Of course, from my end it still comes up as blue. Okay, so yeah, proficiency. So again, MMOs and um, RPGs already have this. You're rolling to hit basically. So it looks like now they're just uh looks like they're now adding words to your uh, skill level. Yeah, two, four, six, or eight. Each creature has six ability scores or represents raw potential. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure this is I'm sure sure that's nothing uh, no one's ever heard of before. So that's standard issue there and just about every other RPG out there. Uh, traits, same thing here. Or, I guess at least in a game like Diablo, they're called passives. Or, yeah, passive abilities. Traits. Uh, mode to play. To play and determine the pacing. Times spent exploration and covering mystery. The age of loss of characters often find themselves in an encounter. So I guess we have three. Of, yeah, we have the non-combat part of an of an adventure. Then you have the actual the actual fight. And I think um. Uh, D&D 5th edition has this as well. I can't remember the exact uh, the exact mechanics, but you can um you can spend points of some kind some kind of currency on um doing various downtime things. They're saying it here too. Basically, non-combat, out of combat stuff, it's more free form. Encounters have rules and stuff. They're more stricter. Yeah, they well initiative initiative, just about just about every other uh well, RPG out there.
let's get more interesting here. There we go. There we go. The encounter order rounds six seconds. Yeah, that's that's pretty true in a lot of other RPGs. Uh, during a round, again, turn. Three actions. Oh, damn. And one reaction. Um, I think, um, another RPG, Shadowrun, they kind of have the same thing, too. I think, um, they have, they have free actions, simple actions, and complex actions. I think, uh, free actions, you can do as many times you want in a round. Um, simple actions, you can do two of them in one round. Complex, you can only do one per round. I think you can, um... You can trade in two simple actions for one complex, though. Yeah, free actions don't count. Yeah, don't count against your number of actions you can take on your turn. And then, um, something else I was wanting to do, too, is, uh... Um, I also pulled this up as well. I want to... I want to try creating a character, but again, I don't, I don't know uh, when I'll get to that. Well, and it also looks like, um, it looks like a, they use a lot of symbols for this too. So I'm guessing there's also activities. I'm guessing this here would use uh, two actions. This symbol here would use three. Cast uses two actions. Reactions are only in response to certain events, and only if you have an ability that's a lot that allows it. Um, so far, this part here I think is uh, better than D and D. D and D, you had a. I think you actually had to tell the DM that you're wrong. Oh, how to, I think you had a, you're delaying an action until a certain event triggers. I'm understanding that right. You could take uh, one reaction per turn. But I I can't remember the exact specifics, but yeah, I, I kind of like this though. You can just go ahead and use it at any time. If you have if you have any kind of reaction ability, you can use it immediately in response to somebody else's somebody else's action. So, in other words, it kind of works like the counter spell does in Magic the Gathering. Or, hell, um, instant effects in Magic the Gathering. You can use them at any time, not just at certain times. It sounds like, um, reactions in Pathfinder are like that, too. So, that, yeah. So, okay. Definitely a one-up on that. Uh, reading a character option. Okay, so, I, I got this window, too. Okay. I'll go ahead and cross that out. I gotta... So... I guess... I'm gonna go ahead and assume that most people... Most people uh, understand the basics of character creation, even in video games. Man, I'm gonna... I'm gonna tweak this window a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna... The window might look a little wonky. I'm gonna separate this from my browser and make it its own window. Okay, so let me work on this a little bit. Now, it, something, um, something really oddball might pop up here. I'll try to catch it as quick as I can, though.
Okay, so yeah, it looks like I gotta do a... I gotta do a full-blown overhaul in this window. Most of it I don't really care about. Over. Okay, so yeah, that that looks a little better. I had a there was a lot of fat I had to cut out of it. Uh, all right, unknown adventure. That was that one I started working on yesterday. I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm hoping I can move the window because a good chunk of it got cut out. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, it. I don't. And you can't move the uh, you can't move the sub window either. So. Nor can you resize it, so... But, uh... I'll, I'll... If I need to, I'll try to explain what's... I'll try to explain what, uh... The stuff on the right is, the stuff that's cut off. Um, but... You know... And also in this... In this one here... They also have uncommon races. I don't know what the drawbacks are, or... Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is gonna be kind of a problem. Oh, this is the, uh, the PRD on the specific race. What I was wanting to look at is, uh, like, is there anything special you have to do to play an uncommon race? And I'm guessing all these rare races, you can't play them at all unless you have a very good reason. And hell, most of these, I don't, this is what I noticed yesterday too. Most of these races I never even heard of. Okay, uh, speed, swim 30 feet, I guess this is, uh, amphibious, I guess he's like a frog. Gilman. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, good thing I clicked this. So... Something of uncommon rarity requires special training or comes from a particular culture or part of the world. Some character choices give access to uncommon options, and the GM can choose to allow both the uncommon creatures and common creatures. Typic so, let me let me look that over again. Because I know uh, in d and I mean, you had, a, you had a base... In the player's handbook, you had a basic set of races... But um, you had those, and then um, in other books, like like in the uh, Morning Kanan's Guide to the Universe or something like that, there's a bunch of races that are in there, but it's a non-core race. So I guess to go ahead and save me some time, I'll just stick with the common ones. Um, yeah, landed right on it. But also, I also need to mention too, the uh, character that I created in D&D was uh, a bugbear mercy monk. Uh, it's a type of monk that's, uh, he can, uh, he, spe he, can, uh, he can heal, and uh, he can also, uh, he, can, he can deal necrotic damage, I guess, uh, dark damage, and I need to look at my OBS real quick. Yeah, I, and I'm very sorry for that. 
But yeah, the whole right side of the page is like gone. But yeah, that's so. But yeah, that was my um. That was a stat. Charisma is a stat that I don't care about. And I'm also assuming that. So you get, you got a boost of Constitution, Wisdom, and then a free one. That free one is probably going to be Intelligence. Intelligence, Strength, or one of, one of them. I don't know, know yet. But coming from um, coming from D and D, I already have a pretty good idea as to what kind of character I want to create. Like I said, um, he was a a bugbear, mercy monk. But yeah, so far it looks like I found my guy. I don't care that much about constitution. It's of medium importance to me. Yeah, but um But yeah, I got to But yeah, I can't um I can't I Like I said, constitution is a uh, is mid-tier to me, but I don't want it I don't want it the lowest. And strength for for what I envision for my character I don't want... He doesn't need to have 20 strength or something or anything like that, but he needs to be fairly strong. And he's... Again, I don't care for charisma, so I don't need that. Same thing. A, how, the, how the hell does a goblin get charisma as a ability boost? Their Goblins are usually some ugly motherfuckers. I don't see how they can get a boost of charisma. What a strange world Pathfinder is. But yeah, and the uh, ability flaw, wisdom. This is my highest. This is my highest stat. It's the highest priority with me. So yeah, it can't be a flaw. Again, strength. Strength. I gotta have. I gotta have some strength. And then human. I, no, I don't like to follow the herd. So you get two free ability boosts. But I'm. I don't. I don't do white bread. So, so it looks like, yeah, um, but I, but again, Constitution is mid-tier with me. I guess I just noticed it's one drawback, but they're dwarves, so I mean, naturally, they're not going to move. They're not going to move very fast. Elves get 30, so they're speedy. Gnomes, 25. Goblins, 25. So, yeah, elves are the speedy ones, but again, I got to have some constitution and then um another another pretty important stat with me is actually intelligence and it looks like here they they took a page out of the D&D 3rd edition playbook or hell I I think the first 3 editions had it well yeah First three editions had it. Intelligence modifier. It also determined what languages you spoke. What what languages you're able to speak. Whereas uh, in D&D 5th edition, I don't know about 4th edition. I've never played it. I, never even, I don't have any of the books on it at all. Um, in 5th edition, uh, they, did, they did away with that. They, um, they based what uh, the languages you spoke on uh, what class you chose, um, what feats maybe, what um, and what background you chose. It was based on that. It wasn't based on intelligence at all. So, but yeah, dwarf it is. And like I said, charisma, is, charisma is one stat I don't care about. So we got ourselves a dwarf. Uh, background. Acrobat. In a circus around the streets. One. Okay, strength or dexterity. Damn! Is there free ability? What are the channel? What are the channels I brought up earlier? Um, I don't know the name of the channel, but um, one of the things one of the things he definitely said was um, 
a lot of your, a lot of the feats, uh, the feats and classes and stuff, already have a bunch of a uh, bunch of stat boosts. So, yeah. So, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Cause I think, um, I don't. No, I think now that I think about it, I think uh, D and D, it had a fair amount of that as well. Yeah, I just thought about it. Not much different. So, I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna go ahead and fix this, because it is really becoming an eyesore. Whoop, wrong one. That's, uh, that's rare. I ain't no animal anti-tech activist. <laughs> See the sorts of things that technology brings to the environments. <laughs> oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. No. Group coercion? Uh-uh. That is not me. But... Let me keep looking. Bounty hunter, cannoneer, barber. <laughs> oh damn, they are. Uh, for some strange reason, they're. Uh, they got dentistry in there. They got bloodletting surgery. Huh? Never heard of these being called a barber before. I thought a barber was just somebody that cuts hair. So patient. Oh, damn. Kind of reminds me of a fighting game character, Faust. Yeah, that wouldn't be me. Bookkeeper, bounty hunter. Uh! You ran the numbers on a large farm or something. God. I wonder if they have a... I wonder if they have a laundry worker in here, too. You wash clothes for kings and royalty. Expensive pair. You might be adventuring to learn how others plan this trade. Of course, you may be... Duh. Society and the accounting lore. Oh, they actually have this, huh? Accounting. Last people I'd expect to have it. Last people I would expect to have adventuring careers. So yeah, bounty hunter, cannoneer, circuit judge, clock, clock fighter. Skill to repair and modify clockwork constructs. Oh, that battling. <laughs> rock'em sock'em robots. Yeah, rock'em sock'em robots. You know how to get. Oh, there was. There was another. Um, I think it was on Spike TV many years ago. But yeah, everybody. Um, all these guys built these little little robot battlers, and that's. I wish I knew the name of it. But yeah, that, that clock fighter. They got a... Hi, I make macaroni cheese for a living until I turn into a life of adventuring. Deputy detective. Discarded duplicate. Oh, I hate those. I'm, I get tired of seeing these. Where they're not people, they're just creations. Uh, driver. I could probably see this. Have you ever played a you ever played a PlayStation game called Driver? Like you're the wheel man? Yeah. 
Acrobatics. How would a driver get that? You can handle just about anything on the road with. Edit, eat a long con. Really? I guess, uh. I guess you. You're a farmer till you turn to a life adventuring. There we go. There we go. Field medic. So, damn. Well, looks like I found mine already. Yeah, in the chaotic rush of battle, you learn to adapt to rapidly changing conditions. You administer to battle casualties. Yup. Um, yeah, truth to ability boost. Probably wisdom, and then, I don't know. But, on my, uh, Bugbear Mercy Monk in D&D, I think the, uh, the important stats were all fairly balanced. You're training the medicine skill and the warfare lore. Battle medicine skill feat. But yeah, I don't, I don't need to look at the rest. I found it. Field medic. Uh, class? Champion, cleric, druid. Where's monk? Yeah, I'm... Training perception, I for to... But, but like I said, um... I know 3rd edition has it. I think 2nd edition, I'm not sure about 1st. But... Intelligence actually does play a pretty important role in a Pathfinder 2, it seems. Trained in simple weapons, unarmed attacks. Untrained in all armor. Okay, um, background boost. Like, no dexterity. This, this is the free one. 12, 12, 12. Oh, damn. Yeah. But down here, I'm trying to keep these fairly balanced. Um, strength, wisdom, dexterity, intelligence, with wisdom being the higher of the four. I see, I see. These are uh, four extra points then. Um, one, two. So, yeah. See, um, let me let me go back real quick. On on my um my my bugbear mercy monk in D and D. It was um, 14, 10, uh, 15, or basically I used standard array. I didn't dice roll. Yeah, in that game there, you had three options, either standard array. Um, you had six, which gave you six numbers, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight. 
So with that, I had a... Um, I think Wisdom was 15. Uh, 14. Dex was 14. Wait, basically... Yeah, Wisdom was uh, 15. Uh, intelligence, Strength, and Dexterity were all 14. Constitution was 10. And Charisma is 8. Looks like I got a bit of a bonus here. Yeah, so it looks like I it actually came out a little bit better this time. Or, it came out a little better on Pathfinder. So, and then skill training. So, I don't know what the uh, ML. The uh, Devil One Acrobatics, Athletics. Um, what I, again, the guy's a field medic. Um, but another thing I forgot to mention uh, a little while ago, another uh, component on my character is search and rescue. You know, like little girls get trapped in the bottom of a well or whatever. He, this guy just goes right goes right on in there and get, pulls them out. You know, people, you know, miners get trapped in a collapsed mine. Your goal is to try to you know try to get in there and try to clear the way so you can get the miners out of there. That kind of thing. So search and rescue, that's his other aspect. No. I, I would have to look up diplomacy, though. I know, um, it means different things in different systems. Um, definitely gonna click that one, though. I don't know exactly what society means. Nature, I might have to look that one up as well. Medicine, yeah, pretty big gimme there. And stealth, kind of the same thing. Again, uh, sometimes, sometimes the uh, the person I'd have to rescue or the person I'd have to heal up, you know, and, or I should say, the person I'd have to heal and or rescue, he might might be a hostage, or might be somebody being kidnapped for ransom. Again, I'd have to be able to sneak in there quietly and get the you know get the person out, you know, get them out without getting caught. Uh, survival. I guess I have one more. So I'll go ahead and, um, I'll call it good on that. There it is. So. So let me look up diplomacy real quick. Through negotiation. This would be my main thing right here. Negotiation. I, mean, I ain't no ass kisser. So. so I could probably see. But again, charisma. It's based on charisma. Um, I know. I, I think in second edition D&D. &D, part of it. Part of diplomacy was actually based on intelligence as well, not just charisma. Okay, here, let me back up. Um, local markets and gatherings and attempt to learn about it. Okay. Common rumor. Make an impression. Uh, you seek to make good impressions on someone to make them temporarily. Oh, basically buttering them up. And again, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this system. So this, this is a huge drawback right here. The critical success and failure. I just want yes or no. I just want pass or fail. You can make a request. Oh, just trying to get somebody to do a favor for you. Okay. But anyway, that, see, that seems to be what that is. Um, so let me... Okay, nature. You know a great deal about the nature. Nope. Nope. Nope, I ain't no beast master. Yeah, I ain't no animal trainer, so... Yeah. So I guess... Uh, Nature isn't really the same thing as herbalism. Like, 
I figured, you know, he'd be able to make medicines and stuff like that. Forensics? Well, that's kind of cool. Damn it, I hate... Medi yeah, medicine. Diseases, poisons, wounds, forensics. Forensics? That'd be pretty cool. Uh, nature, the environment, blur, geography, weather, creatures, nat nat natural plants. It, it, no. So, I'm guessing, uh, apparently, uh, herbalism wouldn't fall into this category. I would, I, unless, it, uh, unless it actually falls under medicine. Alchemical reaction to creatures, item value, I'm not into all that. Ah, here, society. Local history, key person, okay. Pop culture. So, performance, religion. So, yeah, I. So, that's us. People and systems that make a civilization, you know, historical events. Okay. Yup. Subsist. Standard of living described. GM determines that DC based on a nature of the place you're trying to subsist. Oh, so in D&D, &D, this is called. This is called survival. Being able to survive in the wilderness. Great forgery, which that that wouldn't be me. That wouldn't be me. Uh, decipher writing. Secure top. Okay. Well, yeah. But here, let me um look at survival too. Living in the wall. Okay, foraging for food and building shelter with training and discovering tracking, hiding your trail. Even if you're on train, again, um, as search and rescue, you might be, you know, let's say somebody's daughter got kidnapped and you gotta go rescue her. Be, having, having survival would be a great, would be a great trait to have. You know, you might be able, you might need to be able to, um, you know, track the movements of the kidnappers. You don't gotta go chase them down and all that. So, and plus you might all be, you might be out in the wilderness for a while too, trying to trying to find them. So. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and be honest. Um, I have the external speaker turned off. Um, I, it, it slipped my mind when I started on this video. Uh, but yeah, I, I got the external speaker turned off so I can't hear it. I I need to be able to concentrate on talking. So without being distracted by the music. I try to pick something that's like really quiet and laid back though. You know, so I'm not, not trying to be a douchebag or anything. Like throw it on Pantera as far beyond driven, you know. Loud ass metal and I don't have to hear it. So I don't want to be that guy. So, so yeah, let me go ahead and... Um, so it looks like what's playing right now. What's playing right now is uh, all the thing, their self-titled album. But as it's a pretty quiet, laid-back album, it's like just acoustic guitar. Um, or I should say, acoustic electric guitar. If that makes any sense at all, I'll just go ahead and leave it on. So sorry about that. Okay, so I still have one more point left. Um, let me um, let me let me back up and look up performance. You're skilled at a performance. Use your talents to make a living. Mm, uh, no, I thought um. I thought, I know in uh, in D and D, at least fifth edition, performance refers to um, performance refers to like playing an instrument, stuff like that, and drawing paintings and all that. So yeah, wouldn't be this. Um, uh, religion, secrets of deities, 
dogma plays in Rome. How magic works. Um, interested in the lore part of it because um, if you're um, if I was to if I was to heal somebody or if I was to do first aid on somebody I can't think of any specifics but I think there's people out there that can't have certain things done to them for religious reasons I mean I wish I could think of something but yeah I know um, you know you can't Someone's religious beliefs might prohibit them from taking a certain kind of medicine, I guess. And, um, as a field medic, you'd... Maybe not, like, at, out in the middle of combat, but outside of it, you might have to be aware of somebody's uh, religious bent, and they, you know, they don't want... They can't take certain medicines, they can't take this, they can't eat that. Or... Or like, um, I think it's Ramadan, like you have to fast, but if you say, if you're fasting, you know, if you're fasting and you like fall and break your arm, you know, it might, might be good to know that if I'm doing first aid on you, that I can't feed you anything, anything with calories. So, because otherwise I, I can't really think of anything else. Diplomacy, being able to like calm calm down hysterical people like soldiers that got got their legs blown off by a landmine. You, I mean, it might be good to have to calm them down. So, yeah, it doesn't say anything about. Yeah, it doesn't really say anything about. It. So I guess, as an op to I don't it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense living in the wilderness, foraging for food and stuff like that. Nah, I just it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense to not know about nature. I mean, you're living in the wilderness; it only stands to reason that you know you know you know know a little something about it. So yeah, but again, it. I'll, I'll, I'll continue, I'll continue on. Well, yeah, it looks like we're going a little over long here. Uh, 53 minutes, so... sure would like to wind it down at some point. Okay, so we have... Again, I'm... Well, these are races. So, Dwarf. Ancient Blooded. Oh. Um, magic Resistant. Surprisingly, they can, um, hear your trade and crafting, death war, <gasps> excuse me, war on necromancy, okay, so, then, okay, you pick one of these and you have resistance to it, I think, energy emanation, fire resistance, I would almost, I would almost want to say Forge and Anvil should go hand in hand. I mean, this is, this is almost like RuneScape. Like, like the MMO RuneScape. They always have their, uh, Forges in one part of the kingdom, but then they have their Anvils in another. I wonder if this is where, um, I wonder if this is where they got their influence from. All the, I mean... All the uh, blacksmithing stuff that I ever seen, they always had the uh, the forge and anvil right next to each other. Makes sense. Oh, 
Oath Keeper. You never tried to lie to get what you wanted. Ah, looks like I found mine. Especially. Actually, um, in D and D, uh, there's a god in there. His name's Tyr, T Y R, Tyr. He's the god of justice. He actually had it up. His priest actually had some had something like this. Like if um, uh, if a priest of Tyr ever lied, he would uh, that person would be struck blind for like, or until he atoned for the deed or something like that, cause cause of his lying. Sense motive against attempts to lie to you. Okay. Plus two. So checks to convince others use. Wow. Others you speak the truth when you are telling the truth. So I should almost uh picking this, I should almost do what diplomacy then. But let me let me look up the rest of them. Okay, so yeah, work with rocks. Oh, so yeah, wolf keeper it is. Um, ancestry feet. situation specific and and then and then I it would almost uh it would almost force a DM to have to they would like have to put some kind of mechanic in their dungeon that gives a frightened condition just so I could you know just to make it worth my while to take this. So it wouldn't be much fun for the DM either. And I'm not gonna mess with these uncommon ones. be kind of cool. Well, I'm up. Take another drink of water. guess on that one there, yeah, your your ball's deep in stone, so yeah. you have an after note same thing, your ball's deep in stone, so surface dwarf ethnicity. Oh, it just hit me. Um access. Underground dwarf. Okay. So in order to have Porch Day's Rest, you have when you uh, create your background story, you have you have to be some kind of underground dwarf. That's what that is. So dwarven lore maybe. Um, surface culture. Okay, so any surface dwarf. Well, again, I can't. I, so far, I can't really use the background that I created for my Bugbear Mercy Monk in D&D in D &D for here, uh, cause I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a dwarf kind of player, although it looks like according to looking at this so far, I might have to be, but, uh, I know on my Bugbear, 
And that's something else, too. Bugbears are chaotic evil. At least according to the Monster Manual. So, I had to come up with something to make this guy lawful good. So, I don't want to go into too much detail on that, but just... I really had to shoehorn a story in to, get, to make that work. Looking at this on the upside as a... Playing as a dwarf, but again, I'm not a... Again, I'm not a, not a big dwarf person. But on the upside, though, at least, uh... I don't have to come. I don't have to concoct with a total crazy story to make them lawful good. I mean, in the monster manual, dwarves are lawful good. So your interaction. Your, let me read this. Your interaction with other cultures. Now. Okay. Yep. Yep. Again, he's a field medic, and another aspect of him is search and rescue. So interaction to other cultures. Yeah. So. I mean, you're not picky about who you rescue. I mean, they all need help. So, many other ancestries, but also helped you realize the value of your own. You came to train efficiently. Okay, I already have that. Or the lore corresponding to your culture. So, let me look at... You learn techniques first devised by your ancestors. Oh, no. Oh. Nope. Uh, no, no, no. So, surface culture it is. Dwarven subculture. Alright, so class B. What we'll do you mean? <laughs> so you get to be the karate kid. <laughs> Ain't no crane. Uh, I'm not even gonna go with that one. Anything with the word dragon? No thanks. Might as well just wear a sheepskin if I was gonna do that. Ground taking a posing, knuckle walking. No. Nope. Uh, keep rush. Oh, uh. If uh, spells are anything to go by, I'm shying away from that. I'm not a fan of the way spells work in D&D. Meaning, uh, you can only, uh, basically, you can only cast spells once a day unless it's a cantrip. That's, uh, I think that's a 5th edition specialty right there. If they have cantrip spells, you can use them as many times as you want. But every other spell, you can basically only use them once a day. So, no thank you. Focus pull at one point. And then key strike, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Key strike, spell. Again, I'm thinking once per day, no thank you. I ain't no, and monastic archer, I ain't no archer. Traditional weaponry. Oh, so this is kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think. It's kind of like, uh, the, the Kensai monk. In D&D 5th edition has this. You can uh, actually train with big melee weapons. Um, no. Nope. You are... You are unarmed and touching. Uh, uh no. Yeah. Mountain stance is a no-go. There's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of instances where you're going to be lifted off the ground. And Reign of Embers is like super, is a rare one, so... Uh, Reflective Ripple. You understand some blue grace? Okay, I can, I think I'm, I think I'm going to like this one. Blow with your movements and attacks, you make blowing wave attacks that deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage. They are in the... Brawl, ag holy shit! Agile, disarm, finesse, non-lethal, trip, unarm, mine. Or here, let me at least read the rest of it. While well, our reflective ripple stance, which is something I'm definitely going to be in permanently, plus one circum athletics checks to disarm, swim, or disarm, swim, or trip, and you gain. And this is something else too. 
Um, my monk, again, his specialty is as a field medic and search and rescue. The only kind of combat he's going to do is just, you know, to disarm the opponent. Basically, you're trying to neutralize him, not kill him. So, yeah, so Ripple Stance is perfect for me. To avoid being disarmed and tripped, the same thing here. I mean, look, I don't mean you no harm. I just want to, you know, I just want to rescue this kid or, you know, so, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of bubble gum. I'm, you know, the, you get the idea. This speed gains your choice of either divine or occult trait. Imagine your key spell. Um, I'm assuming divine is good, is a good aligned, and occult is evil. I'm, that's what I'm guessing. But I, it, I'm, I'm probably not gonna. Yeah, fire, fast fire, moons, flashy spark attack. Uh, yeah. You can take an L. Yeah, it's damage. Tiger stance is probably gonna be the same thing. You can step ten feet. Wolf. Go to the ground. Oh damn! We've got quite a bit here too. Agile, backstabber, finesse. No. Yeah, but again. So, reflective it is. Got one more point to spend. Um, it's probably gonna have to be diplomacy. Well, plus two. Otherwise. It's gonna have to be a religion. Nope, wrong one. But I already have, I already have plus three in that. So, I guess diplomacy is the only thing I can think of. I mean, I'm guessing Arcana is magic. I, it's out of my league. Or no interest in that. Crafting, unless it's like potions and medicines or something, maybe. I, mean, I ain't no liar, so deception's out of the question. Intimidation? Nope. Uh, cult? Nope. Uh, performance, unless it like involves like music instruments or something, but the way I'm reading it, it's your is the art of performing, not like learning an art or something. So, yeah, I'll go with that. So, train and lore your knowledge is expanded. Choose an additional lore subcategory. Okay. Dormant subculture. Damn, there's a lot I can't do. Well, I wish it would kind of, wish it would kind of tell me what uh, what kind of dormant subculture I can learn. That's level two. I'm not gonna mess with this. I'm just gonna keep my level one. Um, we'll just say, oh, Billy Bob. Uh, level one speed, 20 feet. So yeah, we got ourselves a good balanced character here. Okay, but it seems I've 
pretty much done all I wanted to do on this. Um, I got one more. I still got one more. Oh, no, I didn't do it. So, I decided on diplomacy. I'm thinking... Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe there are, you know, situations that come up where somebody hysterical or if I have to, if I have to try to convince somebody to let me into this area because somebody in there really needs help, you know, that kind of thing, maybe uh, being able to negotiate might come in handy. Certain abilities granted by your character class. So this is a difficulty for certain abilities granted by their proficiency bonus for their class. Okay, so Huh? Is that a is is that an armor class? Or I don't get that one. Is that a is that a base number? Is that my, I mean. Plus the mod. Perception measures your ability to be aware of your environment. Every creature you have to works with and is limited wisdom modifier which plus six and these are all saving throws so they use your constitution modifier damn what okay um but yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here because I went quite over long on this um, I wasn't expecting it to last no hour and 13, so. But, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> if you guys managed to make it this far, thanks, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate that, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.